So how do you move up, down, left, right in Vim? Well, first of all, you can just use the arrow keys like you always have, but you can also use H, J, H, H, J, K, and L. Hey, welcome back to another day of Vim Alphabet where we cover Vim A to Z, covering, giving a day for each letter, except for today where I'm going to jam in four of them because it would be very, very boring videos otherwise. Now, in any editor, you can navigate with the arrow keys, up, down, left, right. Vim gives us an additional way to do that. Now, you can still use the arrows. There's nothing that's going to prevent you from doing that. But Vim also gives us a way that we can do it by using keys on the kind of main part of the keyboard. The reason is because it does kind of like take a little bit of extra energy and like kind of you can have some misfires as you're you're moving around with your keys. Um, whereas it's kind of nice to have those right on the keyboard. Now, Vim has this concept of a home row. And if you look at your key, keyboard, um, H, J, K, and L are all right next to each other. And they're all right under this hand in most like Western keyboards. And in Vim, that puts the up, down, left, and right actions right under your fingertips. So uh, obviously Vim thinks that these motions are very important. So let's open up Vim and we'll open up quick brown dot text because that's the one that has the most uh, lines available to us. And um, now I'm navigating right now with my arrows. I'm going right, down, left, and up. Now I can also do that with these uh, Vim J. Oh man, I always screw these up. H, J, K, and L. To go up, I'm going to use K. Actually, let's let's start over. Let's go with J first. Alphabetically. Is that right? H, I, J, K. Nope, not alphabetically. Let's start alphabetically. H is going to be um, the key that moves left. I keep doing this, but I think the directions are opposite for you. So I'm going to go back to the first character of the document, and I'm going to use these keys to navigate around. In order to go right in the document, I'm going to have to use L. Okay. So every time I tap L, it's going to move to the right one character. H is the opposite of that. H is the one that moves left in the document. So I'll hit H a few times, navigate back towards that column zero. If I want to go down, that's going to be the job of J. And if I want to go back up, that's the job of K. Okay, so L moves to the right. H to the left, J is down, and K is back up. I have a particular uh, issue kind of talking through these because my keyboard is totally different. I use Dvorak and uh, everything's a little bit messed up. So I can't just look down and see what the, what, what the keys are. We can use these anywhere that we would have used arrows. So let's move forward a little bit to this E. If I wanted to delete and go back a character like I did with my arrows before, I can now do that with H. So I can do D H and that's going to delete left. D J is going to delete down. D K is going to delete up. And D L will delete to the right, the character under the cursor. And that's really all there is to H, J, K, L. They work exactly as the arrow keys do. As you start to explore Vim and get more proficient, you'll start to realize some of the places where it is really nice to have these arrow keys right on the keyboard. For example, like D down is kind of uh, an awkward motion and you might be prone to miss, especially given how small the little arrow keys are. But D, J is just right there. Now, I know that you're thinking, Wait a second, I is right in the middle of there, and you're totally right. We had to skip I in order to cover the arrow keys, but tomorrow is the day that we cover I. So, I'll see you then.